Should I do it? Should I do it? Should I do it? Ah! Before you spend your first or next $1,000 on comic books, I suggest you watch this video first. Hi, I'm Keston. In this video, I'll share the tips I've learned and open my playbook to you. I was fortunate to meet a veteran collector who gave me honest advice and the confidence to invest in world-class books. Perhaps this video can be the confidence booster you need to get started in investing in high dollar comic books. Or perhaps you'll learn a few new strategies if you've been in the game for a while. Some folks will want to watch it all the way through, but others of you may want to skip around and I've provided chapters so you can do just that. Please don't take my advice as being gospel. Learn from as many people as you can. Take the advice that resonates with you. As a heads up, I'm into long-term buy and hold. Buy a book you love at a good price and hold on to it. I still have the cap one I bought 10 years ago. The first challenge is knowing where to start. And a reasonable associated fear is that you'll be taken advantage of by an unscrupulous seller just when you're starting to learn the ropes. Imagine you plunk down $5,000 for a comic book online. Days go by, no book. Weeks go by, no book. You try to contact the seller, but he's disappeared. Unfortunately, you've been scammed. It happened to me, and I'll tell you more about that story in a bit. Beginners are susceptible to being hosed. Let's avoid that. Fortunately, in my experience, most dealers are ethical. I'll provide a few recommendations regarding who to buy from. But before you purchase from anyone, please, please learn the fundamentals of comic value. Let's dive in. Notability, did something momentous happen in that particular issue? Demand for first appearances of A-list superheroes and supervillains is the highest. The Golden Age, starting with Superman, brought in the first wave of superheroes. The Silver Age, the second wave, includes most of what is now called the MCU. Other popular heroes have surfaced since then, but the density of notable books is greatest in the Golden and Silver Ages. Rarity. As a rule of thumb, books with 10 cents on the cover generally Golden Age, or 12 cents, Silver Age, are far rarer than later books. The 10 centers especially can be really tough to find. For example, Action Comics number 1, The First Superman, is estimated to have between 100 and 200 left in existence. Some modern books have hundreds of thousands or even millions of books out there. Further, characters from these books have been around for a long time, 50 to 85 years, and been coveted by generations of collectors. I'm confident that Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, and the Avengers will still be relevant 50 years from now. I can't say the same about lesser characters who have recently been propped up by movie speculation. So here's the first suggestion I'll dispense. If you're spending $1,000 or more on comic books, focus on silver and golden age keys. High demand, low supply are desirable features of any collectible. If you want to find out about the top Golden and Silver Age books, make sure you get a copy of the Overstreet Price Guide. It's definitely a worthwhile read and a must-have resource for any series collector. I've got a link to where to get this book and all other recommended resources in the description box. Okay, we talked about notability and rarity. There's one more. Condition. Most folks who are new to the hobby are surprised about how much condition affects price. Today, comics are evaluated on a 10-point scale from 0.5, which is poor, to a perfect 10, considered gem mint. Beginners should start getting a feel for grade, at least in the major increments. Here's Tales of Suspense 39, the first Iron Man, at a 0.5, a 2.0, a 4.0, a 6.0, an 8.0, a 9.0, and a 9.6. Did you see those differences? It's okay if you didn't. It takes time and experience to spot them. Let's take a closer look at a low-grade, a mid-grade, and an ultra-high-grade book where the differences are more obvious. A .5 often looks like a mess with major flaws observable from a mile away. It's also typically incomplete. A 6.0 has noticeable flaws, but they are much more subtle. A 9.6 is pretty close to perfect with only a couple of minuscule flaws that are revealed only under the closest of scrutiny. Don't cut your finger on those tight corners. As you become more sophisticated, you'll want to know the ins and outs of grading and be able to distinguish among minor grading increments. Here's another great resource for you. It's the CGC Grading Guide. This is put together by arguably the world's most influential grader, and that's Matt Nelson. There are tons and tons of details regarding grading, 
And the more you know about grading, the more sophisticated you'll be as both a buyer and a seller. In the early days of collecting, the differences in price from low grade to high grade were relatively modest or compressed. In a previous video, I showed that a high grade copy of Action 1, the first appearance of Superman, was valued just 50% higher than a low grade copy back in 1971. Over time, however, the distance in price across grades has grown substantially. For the last couple of decades, here's the general relationship of price to grades. They move up linearly up the scale to about a 6.5. That's why you might hear someone say, Tales of Suspense 39 is $3,000 a point. That's $3,000 for a one, $6,000 for a two, and so forth. But after 6.5, the linear relationship doesn't hold. Prices double from a 6.5 to an eight double again from an 8.0 to a 9, and then move up rapidly from there. That's why a low-grade copy of a Silver Age Grail might cost a few thousand dollars, and a 9.6 or a 9.8 may fetch a million or more. That's the heuristic for the relationship between price and grade that I learned when I began collecting seriously back in 2012. I'll go into more detail later because you don't want to make a big-time financial decision based just on a heuristic. Plus, that linear relationship that I was talking about in the low to mid grades hasn't held up so well recently. A question you might ask is why do prices move up so aggressively in the high grades? It's because comics from before 1970 are typically rare in high grades. For example, out of the roughly 2,000 copies of Hulk 1 that have been graded, only 20 are at a 9.0 or better. Out of the merely 75 copies of Detective Comics number 27, only one has received a grade at 9.0 or higher. High-end collectors are often competitive and picky. They want the best of the best and are willing to pay for it. With respect to rarity and condition, let me recommend a resource for you. It's the CGC Census and you can log into it for free. For high-value books, it can at least give you a sense of relative scarcity. For example, it's likely that Detective Comics number 27 is at least 25 times rarer than Hulk 1. It is saying something because Hulk 1 is tough to find. From 1970 forward, the Bronze Age through modern, people started collecting comic books in earnest, purposefully keeping the books and trying to preserve them in pristine condition. Consequently, a high percentage survive and a higher percentage of those books are in high grade. Compare New Mutants 98 census counts to Hulk 1. See what I mean? Tons and tons of super high grade copies of New Mutants 98. Higher grades for that book and similar books are still associated with higher prices. But to me, the grade to price relationship is harder to understand. What are the entry level prices to major golden and silver age books? Or in other words, what can you get for your money? One of the reasons I suggested $1,000 or more in this video is that it's difficult to buy well-known silver and golden age books for under this amount. Fortunately, once you get to $1,000, a number of great options open up to you. As you move higher, there are more and more possibilities. $100,000 can get you a copy of just about any book in the hobby with only a handful of exceptions. In broad strokes, I provide different pricing tiers and show you what types of books that you can get in each one of these tiers. $1,000 can get you copies of several moderate Silver Age Grails, some even in mid-grade. Fantastic Four 48, The First Silver Surfer, Fantastic Four 52, First Black Panther, Tales of Suspense 59, which is the first Black Widow, and X-Men number four that has a double whammy, the first Scarlet Witch, and the first Quicksilver. Speaking of a thousand, I've never gotten a thousand likes on any of my videos. Perhaps this can be the first one. If we go up a bit and we're in the 5 to 10K range, you begin stepping into low-grade copies of many big Silver Age keys, like Amazing Spider-Man, number one, Fantastic Four, number one, Tales of Suspense, 39, First Iron Man, and Showcase Comics, number four, the first appearance of Silver Age Flash. In the $10,000 to $25,000 range, you can get monster Silver Age keys, as well as big Golden Age books. For example, Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man, and Hulk number one, the first appearance of the Hulk. On the Golden Age side, you can get into books like Wonder Woman number one and Submariner number one. As you move into the next tier, the 25 to 100K range, you start getting into huge Golden Age keys. We're talking about Flash Comics number one, Captain America Comics number one, All-American number 16, 
and you might be able to get a Batman Comics number one for just a hair under a hundred grand. At the top tier, you can't get into these books for under a hundred thousand dollars. In fact, some of these cost three or four hundred thousand dollars just to get into the game. These are Superman one, Marvel Comics number one. Detective Comics number 27, the first Batman, and Action Comics number one, the first Superman. These are the four most valuable comic books in the entire hobby. As pricey as these books may seem, recall that the tiers are set up based on low-grade copies, typically a 1.0. If these books were in high grade, almost all of them would be $100,000 plus. And all the books that are in the top tier sell for multiple millions in high grade. Let's talk about raw versus slab books. You're probably thinking, wow, grades play a huge role in pricing. How are grades assigned? In the early years of collecting, this was a huge problem. You might look at a book and think it might be a certain grade and a buddy or dealer might think it's a different grade. Grade haggling ensued because of the price difference associated with different grades. And a beginning collector was often at a huge disadvantage relative to seasoned collectors and dealers. All books were raw at the time, usually bagged and boarded. That changed in 2000. That's the first year Certified Guaranteed Company, better known as CGC, evaluated a comic's condition based on standardized rules, checked for restoration, assigned a grade, and encapsulated with an inner case and an outer plastic shell. This third-party comic book grading service was about to revolutionize the hobby. Soon thereafter, CGC slab books became the standard for dealing in high-worth comics. Sellers could more quickly and accurately convey what they had. Buyers didn't have to worry about undisclosed restoration or books that had been egregiously overgraded. It helped level the playing field. This leads me to the second piece of advice at the beginning level. Buy CGC graded books with blue labels. Let me talk about the label first, and then we'll get back to CGC. The blue label is given to comic books that are simply the grade as marked, with no qualifiers or special considerations. Of course, there are a variety of other labels, purple, yellow, green, gold, and so forth. For beginners, I would not go down those paths because determining value is more complicated. Regarding other third-party grading companies, there are a few, CBCS being the most noteworthy. Nevertheless, CGC is the dominant player, and folks pay a premium for CGC-graded books. One friend asked me recently, are returns guaranteed for comic books? I really wish that was the case, but it's not. Comic books have done well historically. Some issues that cost $0.10 cents or $0.12 cents over 50 years ago are worth a small or even a large fortune today. Nevertheless, like most investments, past returns don't guarantee future performance. My opinion, I believe blue chip comic books will do well in the long run, and I have invested significantly in them. Plus, owning a copy of the first Spider-Man appearance, which I can hold in my hands, makes me a lot happier than owning some mutual fund that is attached to me electronically. Bottom line, invest to the degree you feel comfortable. If you are passionate about comic books, at the very worst, you'll have a book that you love in your possession. Quality or quantity. That is easy. Quality. If you have, say, $5,000 to invest in comic books, I would buy one or two CGC graded comics versus, say, 50 $100 books. For that type of money, you can buy one or two low grade Silver Age Grails that will likely stand the test of time. Fewer books take up less space and take less time to sell. Furthermore, if you do plan to consign to an auction house or dealer, they will likely give you a better rate for big books than smaller books. The reason? The time it costs to process and market a big book or two is much less than dozens of books of equal value. In addition, I've heard many collectors reflect that they've spent thousands or tens of thousands of dollars and now have several long boxes of comics. They wished instead that they had spent the same money on a big grail. Where to buy? The majority of my high-end comic collecting has come from the three big auction houses. I recommend Heritage, Comic Connect, and Comic Link. I have never had a problem with any of these dealers across hundreds of transactions. Each has minor and major auctions running throughout the year. In any given month, you will usually see a few copies of every Silver Age key come up, and occasionally we'll see one of the Golden Age big boys. Further, the majority of auctions start off at a dollar. From my experience, you can typically get a better deal at auction than buying directly from a dealer. That said, there are many quality dealers out there, 
too many to mention in this video, but you can find many of the largest and most reputable in the Overstreet ads. Many of you may wonder about eBay. The vast majority of people on eBay are good actors, but you do see some shady activity. Most of the time, nefarious accounts are easy to spot. They used to sell car parts, no activity for three years, and suddenly they are selling high-end comic books. I don't think so. Sometimes the scammers are more savvy. I was once taken by someone who looked as if they recently had sold several dozen high-end comic books. I bought a book at auction for $5,000. It was a copy of Startling Comics number 49. It appeared as if it were shipped, but never came. The dude jetted. Because I went through eBay, I was able to get my money back relatively quickly, so props to eBay for making things right. Long story short, most of the people on eBay are good, but make sure you look for the following. Check to make sure they have a long history of selling comic-related items. Buy CGC graded books and never go off the site when buying from someone you don't know. I gave rules of thumb earlier, but if you're going to pay big money for books, you're going to want to look at comparables or comps for the book you want in a particular grade. Some of these comps can be found for free, or comprehensive comps can be had for a price. The best place to get free comps for high-end books is Heritage Auctions. Let's take a look at Avengers number one. And let's say that I'm interested in getting a book that's 3.5. So I'll click on the 3.5 here. It'll show me that book you know, as is. So this book, the current bid is 2,500. Heritage adds a 20% buyer's premium. So it's going to bump that up to 3,000. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. Here you can see there's been a few books that have sold back in mid-2022 at that same grade. So it gives you a sense of what those prices are. Now, if you scroll down a little bit and that's not the grade that you wanted, you can say view prices realized that match this item in other grades. And then it'll put all these books up from the past in a huge range. That's about as good as it gets if you want a free resource. Now, something that I would suggest is paying a little bit more money and doing something like Go Collect or GP Analysis, which is what I use. So let's take a look at Avengers Comics number one. So you sign in and you want to analyze prices and put that pound sign, Avengers number one. That'll usually get you the book that you want. So here it comes up pretty soon as from Marvel Comics is what we're looking at. We click on it. And what's going to pop up is the prices of this comic book at various grades. So I'm going to scroll down to a 3.5. Recall that we looked at that over at Heritage. There's a few different types here. But we want to look at the typical universal label of 3.5. What we can see here is the most recent sale was $3,849 back in January of 2023. GP analysis is pulling from many sites, including Heritage like eBay and others, to so get a much fuller picture of the price for every particular grade of a book. Now, if I go into here too, I can click into 3.5. So not only do you see the sales for the last two years or so, but you can go all the way back. So Avengers at a 3.5 sold for as little as $205 in 2002. And you can see how it's gone up. Um, and now we're at 2023. Note, there's more available data for low and mid-grade books because more transactions happen at these levels. The high grades sell less frequently because of their rarity. Golden Age books sell far less frequently in general because of their rarity across all grades. Check out GPA for Detective Comics number 27. It's much more sparse. I'll address pricing Golden Age in another video because it's trickier. Unless you are really bold, buy a few Silver Age books before you dive into gold. Silver is easier to find and easier to get a handle on pricing. Nevertheless, learn about gold too, as that will set you up for later. Is now a good time to buy? Whew, these are strange times. Let's pull up a few graphs of Silver Age books. They tell the same story. Good growth over the past 15 years or so, and then absurd increases from the end of 2020 through much of 2022. Yeah, it was a speculative circus for pop culture collectibles. Comic books were no exception. Many issues saw their values double, triple, quadruple, and more. That was not sustainable. For my part, there wasn't a single Silver Age book worth $1,000 or more that I bought over the past two years. I lived through the tech bubble during the end of the second millennium. 
and saw the housing bubble in the late 2000s coming from a mile away. When everybody is saying an investment can't lose, it usually plummets shortly thereafter. That said, with comics now in a cooling phase, the coming years may be a great opportunity to take a position in a more reasonable market. Certainly now is a better time than in 2021. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Here are strategies for finding a book's fair market value and placing bids on comic books. For most comic collector investors, buying a book is some combination of investment strategy and passion. Obviously, you want to get a reasonable deal, but your collector side really wants that book. I've tried to balance these competing forces with my buying strategy. The good news from a buyer's perspective is that Silver Age comics and low to mid grade come up for auction or for sale frequently. And we're in a market correction phase, so you can be patient and picky in getting a book you want. The bad news? There is no other way to say it. The market right now is weird. Let me first go through my traditional approach, which I use to buy many, many Silver Age keys in the 1.0 to 6.0 range. Then let me tell you what's funky and how I would place bids in the market today. First, I would look at the previous sales and GPA analysis for that book in that grade. I take a look at the 9-day average and the 12-month average. Historically, they're usually not too far away from each other. I'd also look at a grade or two above and below to make sure that the prices for that grade seem aligned. Usually, the 3.0 price would be nestled between the 2.5 and 3.5 prices. If everything is okay, then I feel like I've got a good handle. I'll take that average of the 90-day and the 12-month and call it fair market value. Then I have to think, how badly do I want it? If I like the book and want to have it in my collection, but it's not a must-have, then I'll multiply the fair market value by 0.8, and that's the bid I'll put in. If it's a book that is a high priority, then I'm going to use a 0.9 multiplier. If it's top priority, I'll bid full fair market value. And if it's a book that I have to have, like an addiction, I've gone as high as a 1.1 or a 1.2 multiplier. But that's rare, especially for Silver Age books that come around relatively frequently. Now let me tell you about a much more conservative approach, what I would do if I were hunting Silver Age keys today. To me, there are two things that are funky right now that give me pause when laying down big money for a book. The first is that bubble. Let's look at those graphs we looked at before. Notice again how absurdly the graph goes up at the start of 2021 and continues up through mid-2022. Those prices were artificially boosted in my opinion. Another thing that has bothered me is a departure from the typical price structure for books. Recall that traditionally comic book prices move up linearly from a 1.0 to about a 6 or a 6.5. Now let's take a look in 2021. Note how screwed up the price structure is. The prices are exceptionally compressed at the lower levels. My thought is that people were so desperate to get into a key Silver Age book that they would pay a relative premium for the low grade books. And by the way, big time sirens going off. This is controversy alert. A lot of folks are going to disagree, but here's my thinking. I wouldn't be surprised to find out the market corrected back to a linear relationship of grade to price in the 0.5 to 6.5 range. If this guess were to hold true, the books in the 0.5, 1.0, and 1.5 range would be most vulnerable to major corrections. So what to do about this mess? I have two pieces of advice. First, don't buy low-grade books that are selling a premium to that linear relationship. If a 3.0 is selling 15,000, a 4.0, 20,000, and a 5.0, 25,000, do not pay $10,000 for a 1.0. It should be $5,000. These books are selling for $5,000 a point. Second, the market is already in a correction phase, so don't pay high dollar for a book. So that's something you can do, is you can look at the graph of prices for a book that you want and the grade you want, and you can see how much those books cost at the end of 2020 or the end of 2019, and you may use those as your bids. How do you know you're ready? It's about practice. You wanna gain two big skills before you buy. A suggestion here is to work on your familiarity with books. In addition to the Overstreet Price Guide, Go to Heritage Auction or other auction sites. 
Sort their upcoming listings in descending order by price. Do you instantly recognize the top 50 books? You probably won't. Learn about the ones you don't recognize. Repeat for different auctions. You'll find that the books you don't recognize become more and more obscure, and your breadth of knowledge keeps getting broader. Another suggestion, practice your skills at predicting prices for books you are interested in. Check out these books during the next auction. Predict what they will sell for. After the auction, see how close you are. Over time, you should become more and more accurate. In addition to these skills, you have to feel comfortable pulling the trigger. And that's a personal choice. The topic of comic book rarity. I just barely scratched the surface in this video, but it deserves a lot more attention because there are so many misconceptions about it in the hobby. If you want to learn more about this topic in a fun way, check out this video. And if you like these more in-depth comic book videos, please let me know by subscribing. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you around real soon.